Sack Theater's production of The Menace of Venice. Hands up. Pretend you're in New York City. Hands up just like this. You too can participate in this fringe festival of the theater. There's also a jazz festival, a comedy festival, a film festival, a modern dance festival. For some young Anglos, this is Montreal at its most exciting. Why abandon a city that offers so much? There are young Anglos who are optimistic about Montreal. But they're often artists, actors, journalists. They're like Americans in Paris in the 1920s, immensely stimulated by the presence of another culture. But they're a tiny minority, very different from those thousands of Anglos who are looking for more conventional jobs. My students tell me all the time, in a class, say, of about 100 students, 95% of them have no intention of staying here. For affluent, educated Anglos, at least there are options. But things are much harder for the poor, many of whom have never had a chance to learn French. And if they can't find jobs here, they often haven't got the resources to pack up and head for Toronto or Calgary. It's St. Kevin's School. The Catholic School Board wants to bus the children to other schools far away. But the Parents Committee is fighting the board, with Annette Brown leading the battle. They won't permit us to share the school with the French children because they feel that our language, English, is a detriment. They feel that we will contaminate the French children. And we've surveyed the French parents, and the French parents have absolutely no objection to sharing the building with us. I think if it was taken out of the hands of the politicians, put back to the children and the parents who own these schools, basically, it would be far better better off because they have no objection. The common people have absolutely no objection to sharing buildings, French and English children together. It's a refrain often heard in Montreal. The ordinary French get along wonderfully well together, despite the ultranationalists and their stern warnings about the deadly English bacteria. Kensington School, closed 1978. Victoria School, closed 1979. Baron Bing High School, closed 1980. In 20 years, 100 schools. The schools close. The young people leave the city. The best and the brightest of the young Anglos. And they take with them the seed of future generations. We see everything that matters to us is gone. As far as I'm concerned. But last summer, especially after the, at the Meech Lake, I began to feel unwanted and unaccepted. We're the scapegoats. We're the people that are being left behind, and we're the cost of Canadian unity. Politics is about power, and power is about votes. The votes in Quebec are French. The result is that every government in, in, in Ottawa has always been far, far more concerned about the French and almost indifferent to the English. So that is that the, that is that the English simply have no friends in Ottawa. They never have had. I love Montreal. I love it. It's a great city. It has so much culture, and so, it's just, like, beautiful, but if I have to leave, I have to leave. The beauty of Montreal. There's no other city quite like it. Those who have to leave say goodbye with great sadness.
September 8, 1973. The Van Horn House, one of the great mansions, is being torn down to make way for a nondescript office building. There has been a tremendous outcry from conservationists, but the government of Quebec has refused to help preserve this historic landmark of English Montreal, home of the man who built the Canadian Pacific Railway. Just down the street from the Van Horn House, the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts, founded by Anglos and full of paintings donated by Anglos. But today it is no longer allowed to show the world its original English name. In this way, Montreal's history is being rewritten. Dorchester Boulevard, named after an early British governor who persuaded London to facilitate the survival of the French language in conquered Quebec. The existence of a French Canada today owes much to Lord Dorchester's efforts. And in 1987, Montreal acknowledged this by changing the name of his street to Boulevard René Lévesque. This used to be Peace Centennial Elementary School, and it was, oh, I guess, the, the social and educational center for generations of thousands of families of English-speaking Quebecers. Today, today it's called the Centre Jean-Marie Gauvreau. Nowhere is there the slightest indication that English people were ever here. The people are gone, their communities are gone, and I guess even the memories are going to go very soon. The Montreal Winter Carnival, a hundred years ago. An Anglo initiative to contribute to the liveliness of the city. Making it, one journalist wrote, a very paradise of joyousness and mirth. Blocks of ice cut from the frozen St. Lawrence River. They will be used to build the great ice palace in Dominion Square, the crowning glory of the Winter Carnival. With its tower 100 feet high, the ice palace was an object of wonder. But today, little is remembered about those bygone times, about English Montreal's enormous contribution to the life of the city and the growth of Canada. In Montreal schools, English and French alike, little or nothing about this is ever taught. The curriculum set by the Quebec government finds it of no importance. In the 1880s, there was a new ice palace every winter. In the spring, these noble structures would gradually melt away. Now, in the years to come, in the decades to come, could the memory of English Montreal and its achievements also melt away into oblivion? It's a thought that sometimes occurs to beleaguered Anglos in their darkest moments. I feel very hopeless about it all. It's the youth, the intelligence here. The, the whole strength in the Anglo community is just slipping away. It's just uh, like a hemorrhage.